I'm Dave Ray, and you are watching Graveyard Cars. This time on Graveyard Cars, with SEMA fast approaching, Mark puts pressure on Will to finish the final paint on our Firepower Cuda so Dave can finally begin its assembly. Meanwhile, Mark and Alyssa assess the SEMA Cuda's rear axle and prepare it for installation. Turning up the heat, Mark is sidelined to QC the metalwork for a one of one Q5 Seafoam Turquoise 1969-440 GTX. For this gentleman's muscle car to come back from the dead, its underlying structure must be perfect. With Will racing against the clock to get the final paint on our Firepower Cuda, and Dave champing at the bit to ready its assembly, will the ghouls be able to lay the groundwork and fire up the new plug-and-play 392 crate Hemi? Find out on this episode of Graveyard Cars. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been a step in us that the very dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life, to exactly the way they were on the day they were born. In case you were too busy getting baked, goods from your kitchen, here's what you missed. A one owner GTX came into the shop for a full restoration, giving Mark an opportunity to teach Alyssa about these luxury cars. A familiar old Challenger worked its way into the lineup, taking Mark on a trip down memory lane. And a very special project dubbed Firepower put the crew into overdrive. A 71 Cuda equipped with one of Mopar's brand new 392 Crate Hemis. What's got them rushing to the deadline? This particular Cuda will be unveiled at SEMA's 50th anniversary. Can the crew pull it together and get it done in time? Or is this task too great a challenge? Right now I'm out with my friend William Scott in the paint shop. We were talking about the 1971 Cuda. Talk to me. Firepower in paint behind two days. Yes. Talk to me. Okay. Why is it behind two days? Why is it behind two days? Okay, because when we first brought this project on board, um, everyone was going to jump in, be deep on it, work all the time. And then once the car came in and ready to go, not everybody felt the same way. Well, I don't understand. Two days, though? Mm -hmm. Two days. That's actually pretty good. Let me tell you we something. We should be behind time. a week. Time is everything. Time is I'm the essence. I'm well aware. Yeah, I don't think you are. Oh, I am. One minute too soon, you don't make the catch. One minute too late, you drop the pass. Okay. Well, I need to be soon. This is a game of inches. <laughs> you Heard have it. to be Your whole life is about inches. To claw okay. for that inch. Where'd he go? <sighs> That's Al Pacino any given Sunday, dude. Actually, I think the guys are doing a great job out here. Um, it is a little bit, uh, I guess, unsettling that we're two days behind where we wanted to be, but I think that was a pretty objective time frame, right? I mean, you had given yourself a little bit of Everybody space. got the car for 30 days. Okay. All right. <laughs> this looks like it's inside, and I was asked you if you were gonna scuff that roof, and you're really smart. I did scuff it. In some areas, yeah. I scuffed the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, listen. There's one more area. <laughs> There's a six inch area over there. You just said, oh, the old Life's man's about great. inches. Life is about you said inches. One inch. You gotta be willing to claw for that inch, and you didn't claw for that inch. He's gonna have to do one more. The, the panels that you see out here now, those are all pre paints. Paint everything twice, that gets it perfect. Make sure we don't have any swelling or stuck back into the panels. So this is ready to paint. Am I correct about that? Just about, yeah. So basically, you're ready to shoot this thing. I'm gonna get out of your way. Just make sure, promise me, you scotch bright everything. I don't want any thinies. You got a lisp, you know that, right? No, I don't. Yeah, you do. Oh, you see where your magic hat. <laughs> oh, put your magic hat on. I want it to come out beautiful. Go ahead, tell me about your magic hat. Yeah, I'll wear a hat. What kind of hat? A black GYC hat. Oh, GYC hat. I love those. You know what? There's nothing wrong. Cindy Brady has a lisp too. I know. There's a whole episode about it. It's okay. Silly. <laughs> 
should. Do you want to just do it? No, no. You, you should let it fit for two weeks, though, before you <laughs> yeah, cut and buff it. Yeah, that's what I said. So I'm gonna get the whole inside of this shot in green, and then uh, roll it back out of the booth and start on the outside of the car. So the car's looking really good, and uh, once we get uh, the car over there to Dave here in two weeks, we'll be sitting real good from that point forward. And be fitting good. Hey, Dave, you gotta start building the car pretty soon, buddy. Uh, right now, I just came out to check in on our 1969 GTX. Adam's been doing a lot of the work on uh, getting our front suspensions cleaned up and ready to go, but we moved him out here to the body area so he can start cutting and trimming. This is our 1969 Plymouth GTX. Not the rarest car in the world. They made about 10,000 of the 440 automatic GTX in 69, about another 5,000 of more four-speed cars. What's cool about this car is it's a one-owner car. The guy's dad bought it brand new when he was in the service and the family's had it ever since. And it's sea foam turquoise, Q5, just like our 69 Hemi Roadrunner was. So it's a really cool car. So we were able to save the Dutchman panel, the upper deck filler panel, the rear body panel. That saves us a lot of time when it comes to putting this car back together again. Yeah, we need our wheelhouses inner and outer, but all of this geometry is factory in place and untouched. So now we just put floor pans in it. Once the floor pans are in, put the wheelhouses on, put the quarters on. We don't have to find where in space this thing goes adjacent to the back window opening or the deck or the um, package tray. Everything is right now a good solid part from here back except for the pieces that are out of it. And that's, that's a good win. That's a good score. Look inside here, you'll see a lot of shiny metal. And this shiny metal represents areas that he has already been through here and cleaned drilled out factory spot welds, rolled things out of the way so that we can put our new Auto Metal Direct panels in. On this particular car, we have some rust problems that are underneath it that you cannot see when a floor pan's in it. Equally, we have a torsion bar cross member. That's what this is that normally is okay, but once in a while you get one that's bad. This one's bad. We've got holes all the way down through here. If you see, you can see my hand sticking up through it. We're gonna have to put a piece in here. We may not put the whole thing in. We may put half of it in. We may put the whole thing in. It depends how the rest of it looks once we get it blasted down in these areas. Uh, like with any of these cars, once you get them apart, you always find things. I hadn't put a torsion bar cross member in for a while, uh, so I didn't even think to order that one. So that's the only thing that'll set us back a little bit is I've got about a week to get a cross member in here, but the rest of the pieces will just be custom fab to go in it. Once those things are done, we can move this over to our frame jig. Good job on the cut. Thank you, sir. Good job. Go ahead and clean up your mess. I will let the body men know that this is ready to come in and then I'll go check in on quarter panels to see how long before we can get this moved in there. You know, I like the GTXs. I think they're an all right car. Um, they're the gentleman's muscle car, so to speak. But you know what's weird about it is I've seen more GTXs, which is supposed to be the luxury version of the Roadrunner, with less options than Roadrunners have them. I'm looking at Goldberg's old car, 68 GTX convertible. Manual steering, manual brakes on a GTX? That's kind of weird, right? I got another one here that was also manual steering and manual brakes. It's the uh, blue 69 that you see up there on top of the... The pod, that was an odd one. That's a real live numbers matching 69 GTX. So one says tomato, one says tomato. Me? Eh? Say While Adam diligently works on getting the GTX into the body shop, Will preps the Firepower Cuda for its final paint. Right now the car is uh, masked up 100%, wiped down, ready to go, and ready to get some color on it. So we're doing the car in a single stage, so I'm gonna head in the mixing room, mix it up, and then go in and put my first coat on. There is no tomorrow on the car. We got to get it done now. So the second that thing's dry, it comes out and we hop on another part of the car, address any issues that need it, so that way we can keep going forward. Mark's gonna give me a hard time no matter what. It doesn't matter what hat I'm in. If I paint a car without the hat, he'll find a problem. So I'm just gonna probably stick with the magic hat and just not give him any excuse to start picking on me. George with that hat, he looks like Uncle Fester. It, doesn't, it looks weird. Makes him look 20 times worse. That hat just doesn't work. <laughs> uh, if America sends me hats, that's awesome. Uh, I'll throw most of them away if they're dog hats. But as long as they're cool, then I'll wear them. I probably just won't paint a car with it, but I will wear it. Uh, we got the first coat on, laid down, looks good, and uh, I don't foresee any problems coming forward. So it's all pre-painted, the body is, so now we just bake it for a little bit, come out, and start addressing other areas on the car. 
Now that the car's completely done, I'm gonna go get the mirrors ready, the little blinker lights, stuff like that ready. So when the car comes out, I can go in and paint some more parts and pieces. Wes, how you doing? Good, good. Good, look at that big old box with a radiator. Yes. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks Thought for we'd... taking good care of us. Oh, we try, we try. Well, you so. know we're under the gun. We have uh, zero time. No time. There is no tomorrow. Yeah. That's our, that's from Rocky Three. there is no tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. You want to open it up and take a look? Let's pop this mother bear open and see. Oh, okay. Oh God, that actually looks really good. That's the ice box, that's the first one. Introduced. Really? Yep, we're, we're going we're gonna to be at SEMA as well. We'll be unleashing this, and we'll actually, we actually have a polished aluminum unit just the same. And what's it called? It's called the ice box. The ice box. See, yep. they call me the ice tray. Yeah. So <laughs> that'll, because that's the coldest part of the whole thing, right? I'm ice cold. Pour boiling water down my throat, I'll ice cubes. We don't have to see that, right? We don't need that That's on from film. Christine. I stole that line, too. A lot of my stuff is stolen material. Really? Until you watch the show and figure it out, I take full credit for it. I like it. I like yeah. it. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Cool. Well, I love glad, it. Glad we could be part of it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. From, Appreciate it. All thank right. you. With a firepower CUDA rolling in, Will sets his sights on getting the rest of the body pieces painted so Dave can start its assembly, finishing the mirrors, marker lights, and engine compartment. Paint stuff? Hey, buddy. I got you a package. Uh, another wonderful gift for Will Scott. Oh, it's not even cool. I thought it was like paint. I'm excited to see what you got. Don't look so enthused. No, dude, we're striking out on this whole hat thing. Are you? See? Oh, more look. stupid. That's awesome. It's almost Halloween. It's more st That's like perfect. Oh, look at that. What the is that? Is that your doppelganger? What is that? Bob Ross. That is creepy. You want to paint pretty trees? Happy trees? What the is wrong with people? I think it's pretty sweet. Fits my big fat head. That's ridiculous. What do you think? What is wrong with you people at home? Can you not send in a hat that's normal? Normal hats. This? That's creepy. That's a famous guy. Just like you. Famous. Dear God. No? Creepy all the way around. You paint happy pretty cars and he paints happy pretty trees. Creepy. No? That's pretty sweet. There's no note this time though. No, the picture says it all. The picture says it all, my friend. Well, give me a kiss. Dude, <laughs> you got <laughs> an issues, bro. <laughs> you don't like that? No, Come you on, just it's your put... Halloween costume. I dare you to paint a car with this. No. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you got issues. I'm Will Scott. Ah! Back in the engine room. Mike uncrates the CUDA's brand new rear axle, a Dana 60 replica. This is the rear end that's gonna be going into Operation Firepower. Since we're building a tribute to a Hemi CUDA, a Hemi CUDA with a four speed would have had a Dana in it, a Dana 60. Would have been looked exactly like this one that you see right here. This is a 1970 Dana 60 rear axle. So these are hard to find. And when you do find them, they're very expensive. The ones that are all here have all been accounted for, so we didn't have an extra one. That's where we moved forward and we reached out to our friends over at Mosier. So this is called a Mosier 60. And it's meant to look very, very close in its outward appearance to the original Dana 60. It's available, you can buy it, you can order it, you can get new axles, you don't have to worry about hunting one down or finding one. It uses the same pan cover. Now, they sent two, right? Right. Let's, let's see those. Oh, there's one. The rear differential cover. I asked them specifically to send this one with the rear end. So with this on there, you look like you've got an original 1970 Dana 60. What they've done is they beef this rear end up a lot so it'll handle anything that's getting put out, but still have the basic look of the original Dana. The other one that they've got, which these guys couldn't wait to put on. They're obsessed with it. Alyssa loves this, don't you? Yeah, I think it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I know. I think it's a beautiful looking, it's heavy, it's cast aluminum, it's awesome, it's amazing, it's all those wonderful things, but it isn't OEM. That's him, I don't know. I like I like the custom stuff. I think that that's really cool. I mean, I think that the Moser one looks really bad. If I had a street car and I was building it, this is what I'd do. 
but if I was building an OEM car to look OEM, I'd probably run the original. You know, he's always about original equipment. That's how he likes the cars to look. He doesn't like to get fancy or do aftermarket parts. You know, it's awesome, but he saw it right away and it was like, that's not original. So he was not happy. Similar. Will's been doing a great job getting caught up in the paint shop. The two days we're behind, those are going away quick. With the Firepower CUDA out of the booth, I can now move the Dana Mosier axle in there and get it painted up. Remember, we're gonna make this look exactly like factory. It's an 80% gloss, just like the original Dana's had in it. I love being back in the paint booth. It's like full circle for me. It's, it's how I cut my teeth. I taught Will how to paint, so it's fun to go in there and lay out a masterpiece. Will will walk in, he'll try to find something wrong with it. That's what he does, but uh, I love being in the booth. It's, it's home sweet home to me. With things moving along in the body shop, George is able to get the GTX onto a jig and begin the metal fitting. Right now, George has got me out here to sign off on the final metal fit of the 69 GTX. He's done a really great job. These stands here have just been an absolute time saver. Would you, you have to agree, right? I mean, oh, that's yeah. a big miracle. Everything, you got the datum plane that never changes, the width, the length, all those things that never change. I just want to take a minute and talk about what it took to get to where we're at right now and where it's going to go next and how much the process has sped up as a result of our jigs in it. And, you know, guys like my friend by Curious George here, who does a phenomenal job on all the metal, right? Thank you. It's had the main floor replaced in it, and that's what's in here. This floor has been completely replaced. Frame rails have had section pieces put in them. The rear body panel right here, the cross member, it's been replaced. The main floor section in here, both the step well and the main section have all been replaced. If you look at them, you'll notice that they've all been welded and ground down, so those are permanently mounted to the frame rails of the car. That's the platform. After that, we have to fit our wheelhouses. That's the right-hand inner and outer wheelhouse, and that's the left-hand inner and outer wheelhouse. They get welded to the floor of the car. They also get welded to the quarter panels, which you see mocked into position right now. George has the quarter panels and the wheelhouses screwed into place, not welded into place. Once you have your floors, your main floor, your rear step well, and your trunk floor, that's when you can begin putting in your wheelhouses. But it's really precise how those fit. They have to go a certain way, clock this way, clock back this way, up or down. That allows them to fit the wheel opening itself. If you don't do that, at the same time that you're putting the quarter on, you're gonna have gaps or something's not gonna fit and it's gonna bulge or protrude out. So, when you look along here and you see these screws, that's because this is temporarily held into place to make sure that the wheelhouses, before we begin welding them, are where they belong. And that, would you agree, is where we're at now? Yep. Okay, is check our gaps. These are extensions, so these just float into space. We, you can see we have plenty of movement on those. That's what you wanna make sure before you start welding things in place. Make sure you'll be able to get the line that you want. So now you look, he has a nice reveal between the trunk lid and the quarter panel. Those screws will serve not only to hold it in place when it comes time to welding it back together, but also identifying alignment holes. So once he goes back into those same holes, nothing should have changed. So now, you look at my door, same thing. I've got beautiful line from the quarter to the door. So when you're doing this body work and you have all your lines where they need to be, like that, door to quarter gap, uh, quarter to deck lid gap. So now we can remove the quarter panels. Two things that have to happen. We gotta have the quarter panels off so that George can get in there and weld those wheelhouses in place permanently. Now we know where they go because they're screwed into place. While that's happening, Will will prep out the inside of this panel, lay out the factory sound deadener, and paint or jam work on it, meaning he'll pre-paint the inside of this quarter. So I think that uh, all in all, yes, to, to answer your question, sorry I drug you out through all that, all the lines look great. You did a great job on it. Ryan did a great job. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm done. I'm ready to sign off. Are you curious about anything? No, I'm okay today. I'm not <laughs> curious about anything. Okay, I thought you might have some questions.
So Mike asked my dad if it would be okay if I drove the forklift and brought the engine over for the SEMA car. And my dad actually said, yeah, which I was super excited about. Definitely didn't expect that. We did pre-fit the engine, so we know it goes in there. We know it fits. That should save us time in theory. So hopefully everything goes as planned. I'm really excited that the SEMA car is in here because I feel like I, from here on out, I'm gonna be able to help every step of the way. I actually know what I'm doing. And you know, this is kind of what I've been working towards the last year. I've been jumping around each section of the shop, learning little things here and there, and now I feel like it's all coming together. Okay, a little more. Bingamatic, beautiful. That looked pretty good. I think that's a good starting point right there, gentlemen. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay, ready to go down? Yeah, come on down. We've got this all built out and ready to go, so it should be a real quick process. Uh, go up a little more, please. There you go. Oh, sweet. I'm pushing up, Mike, okay. so hold on. Yeah, don't, don't do that to the surgeon while he's cutting. I'm trying to twist it. You know there you go, boss. Okay. We're lifting the body. <laughs> okay, everything's gonna work out, Chief. Right. It's always stressful trying to put an engine and suspension in. You know, just making sure everything lines up, making sure you don't anything up on the way. But this one was particularly stressful. Nice brand new rear end. Isn't that great? That's awesome. If we just get one or two tight, you're probably yeah, good for now. Yeah, all right. Okay, Alyssa, I believe you can come down at this point. And nuts go to the inside? Is that enough? And, no, yeah, nuts go in here. Oh. Good. So, went crazy. Oh. What are you doing? For the love of dunge. Tell me, tell me when. It's okay, honey. You're doing fine. I got a little overreactive. Not you. No. Sounds weird, doesn't it? Hi. <laughs> so we've got our drivetrain in. The 392 and the Tremec six speed are both bolted in place right now. Dave's doing a little bit of fine tuning. So literally right now, it's just a matter of bolting the rest of the body together as pieces come to us. Dave can get a lot of the interior put together before the doors and the fenders show up, but certainly they'll they'll need to be here sooner than later. But yeah, it's uh, starting to look like a car. Confidence is high right now on Operation Firepower. It got over here just a few days ago from paint. Will did a phenomenal job knocking out the paint work on it. Dave's been busy building out the back end tail lights, rear windows in, uh, rear window louvers, the spoiler, all that stuff. That looks beautiful. Looks the bumper awesome. looks awesome on there. AMD did an awesome job on their bumpers. They're looking really, really good. I think that Everything, when you start talking about all the vendors, I mean, we just got this on, uh, the rear spoiler uh, option, which is, this is the goal wing, they call it, in 71. We got this and the rear window louvers from our friends over at Dale's Cuda Shop. And literally, we bolted these on yesterday. One, once you have the provisions in the holes, yep. five minutes, yeah. 10 minutes. It, yeah, exactly. Fit like it's supposed to, looks like it's supposed to. It's just such a great option, sexy as Yeah, and the vendors, I mean, for the e-bodies, OER, like Dale's Cuda Shop, AMD, I mean, they got everything, awesome you know, between mess. those vendors, you know, you can build out just a really cool e-body, you know. Yeah, two-thirds of the parts probably was OER. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Absolutely you know. gorgeous. Oh, you got your mirrors on, look at that. Yeah, painted mirrors on there. Oh, look at that, is that beautiful or what? Doesn't that look cool? Oh, if I get the billboards from uh, Phoenix Graphics today, I'll make an effort to try to get them on. That would be really cool. I've got to bring that door down a little bit to, to yeah, zero which, point. But which is perfect, though, once I drop the glass Once you get there, it loaded, yep. it'll be fine. Might sag down slowly. I may wait till you get everything loaded in it, because I want it to be at a zero point for the body line before I put the exactly. graphics on. Exactly, yeah, and I'll get the dynamat on the doors, too, and that adds weight, and yep. all that stuff does. Obviously, drivetrains in, did a little bit of plumbing under the hood, and for the most part, we're almost done under there. And so now he can finish putting in the rest of the glass and the upper reveal moldings and things like that. So I'm yeah. gonna get ready to get the rest of the hardware out and start putting fenders on it so yeah. we can marry it. Once we get all the fenders and everything aligned on it, then I'm gonna work on getting the shaker bubble centered in the thing, so. Ah, it's right. gonna be awesome. Keep plugging away. Cool, Keep plugging That's away. It. All righty. God, you know, the funniest thing is, is we, we put a 2016 392 Hemi into a 71 Cuda, and it just fit. The hardest thing, getting an upper radiator hose on it. <laughs> yeah, here's our, our radiator here from Raider Supply House. I mean, these guys did a, a fantastic job. Uh, they call this one here, I think, the ice box. So, which is really neat. You can see our electric fans up front here. They built a really custom shroud on it with the electric fans. It's all nice aluminum radiator, but we did it in black, so it looks kind of OEM. Want to kind of put all your focus on the engine, you know, in this case. But 
Yeah, we're not going to have any problem cooling this engine with this uh, radiator in here. So I'm going to be hanging the fenders here in just a couple of minutes as soon as I get all the hardware out to do it. I may be missing some painted bolts. I don't know why Will would think that it doesn't use as many painted bolts this time, but he's really smart. Originally, when they put these cars together, down at the bottom of the fender, they use studs like this. And that way the fender, the cutout in the fender would just drop down on it and it could be a one-man job putting a fender on. When they go through the shops, people don't pay attention to that, the average aftermarket restoration shop, and they just put bolts in, because bolts will work. But originally it was a stud that took a shim in some cases, like this, another reason for the stud, and then you could shim the bottom of the fender out, opposing the door to get the right style lines. So in this case, I am ready to go. Got a lot done on our 71 Cuda, mainly working on the sheet metal. We got the hood on, you got the fenders on, got all the doors aligned and everything. Uh, I've been putting glass in. This side here, I just, just got done. I'm getting ready to put in my uh, door top edge trim. As you can see, all our drip rails on, all our weather strip roof rail is all on. All I gotta do is get some rubber on the door and uh, this side here will basically be done, you know, with just a little fine tuning on the glass. most part we're, we're pretty much ready for the dash I got like just a couple little brackets to put in uh, on the brake and clutch pedal assemblies but uh, you can see we got our wiring harness sitting in here so they're gonna mess with that uh, Ron's coming up from Magnum Force and Mark will get the the brain box and everything mounted uh, hopefully you know temporarily until we can get the dashing because it's actually gonna go where the glove box was in the dash so that's why all our wires are kind of hanging out here we're just staying focused and just kind of doing it one piece at a time. and But uh, back into the car is completely done. All we're waiting on is a rear volance, but we've got to do that when we do the exhaust because those exhaust tips come right through that rear volance. All right, getting ready to check in on Willie. He's been primering our 1970 Dodge Challenger RT 444 speed, one of 916 built. There he is right there. Uh, the body man, I want him to start working this. This is choppy right here, and there's no reason for it to be choppy, the top of this slip right here. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry? I wanted that vertical lock support painted, so I could just send a picture to the customer. Oh, it's painted. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Where? It's installed on the green SEMA car. Why would you do that? Because you said you needed a vertical lock support, and you needed it now because there was no tomorrow on building that car. This car didn't have one? It had one. I took it off this car. You stole the part off this car for another car? Your words were to go get me a vertical lock support that'll work on the SEMA car. Well, not to take it off this car. You don't understand, this is my car now. It's not the former guy's car, this is my car. Oh, this is yours? Yeah, this is mine. This is my car. Oh. You don't want to steal parts off my car. You're going to be in the unemployment line, you know what I'm saying? Who? <laughs> well, there's your, there's my, my daughter right there. Hey, it's Will Scott from Graveyard Cars. Shut up. I got something for you. <laughs> A gift. Uh, there's that's nothing where on the that. box went. I want to get the... You beat me to it. Oh, hey. How you doing, boss? Oh, now it's like, you two can talk. <laughs> <laughs> a little choppy in there for primer. A little choppy. Let's see what you got today. If it's more, it can't be more stupidity. What do you mean? Our fans don't send you stupid stuff. Have you looked at the past three? <laughs> well, I mean, it's better. Yes, this looks like your style, don't you think? Look at that. That's better, but it, 
It's too small. Are you sure you gotta try it on? Hey! Okay. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Look, you, you got the little head, it won't even fit you. Okay, oh my amigo. god, that's hilarious. That's so great. See? Oh, maybe it will. Uh, that could be your that's magic a little, hat. That's a oh my god. Dad, you just don't have a face for hats. <laughs> Who the <laughs> has a face for hats? You have a face for a hat. I, I, I don't do. me, Master Dazol. Bong Jay. Bong Jay. Maybe uh, put your other, where's your other hat? The trick to this hat is you gotta have, have a margarita to go with it. Do you have the heat on in here? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love that shirt. That do is you? Cause so you could great. Because you could get one. Can I? You can Are get you one, kidding? yes. This is can limited. I get one today? Do you believe in magic? Oh look, you're wearing the Knicks <laughs> hat too. That's your favorite team. What the? Like That's a magic leftness hat. 49. There is? Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Does it say on the back? Does it say something? Coach. Oh, hey, I'm that's you. Your Hold on. It says coach. <laughs> coach Scott. Yeah, I know. He loves being called coach. <laughs> no, it, no. All right, I, right, I saw right, some right. tapes of the football game like two weeks ago. Did the you? Kid, your son ran up to you. Hey, Dad, should I do a 462? It's coach. You oh, stopped whatever. Him in the track and he dropped the pass. <laughs> Anyways, limited edition. There's gonna be 49 more out there in this world. People get to wear them. It's our new, uh, it's our new design. It better not be a new design. It's our design. new design, yes. I yep. think we're gonna sell like hotcakes. It's our new Will Scott shirt for SEMA. I'm rocking this at SEMA. You know that, right? Nope. Now that the foolishness is over. Are we done? Mark and Ron from Magnum Force can focus on getting the exhaust installed on the Firepower Cuda. You're setting it out already? Look at that gorgeous stuff. Hey, hey. How are you? I'm doing good. How you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming back up. We needed your help. Well, I drove up here again with a whole truckload of parts from TTI, and uh, we've got a drive shaft and uh, headers and starter and plumbing and just a whole bunch of parts to help finalize the installation of this build. God, that <laughs> stuff is huge. And they promised that'll fit? That is the concept. Wow. And look at this. <laughs> Original CUDA tips, but that we can adjust in or out. Yeah. Accordingly, right? Yeah, we can make them fit the way we want them to. And this is just mild steel right here, so we can weld it right on. Yeah. Gosh, that is beautiful. Last time I was here with the last batch of parts, the car was still in primer when I left. I come back in here, and we've got this gorgeous green machine sitting behind me. This thing looks awesome. It looks spectacular. Is there any other provisions we need to do before we get started? I don't think so. I think we'll start with getting the headers on. They include the gaskets, the bolts, everything. So we've got a whole kit. We're ready to rock. <laughs> All right, let's roll. Just in time. Could you yeah. make up for the fun we stuff, need a right? Hand. Go ahead and get those up in the car if you don't Are mind. Are those heavy? They look heavy. <laughs> no, oh, they're, not they're not too not bad. Heavy. They're just awkward. Yeah, they're just <laughs> awkward. <laughs> Listen, okay, you want to do, do the help? other side with me? Sure. Okay. Ron's a one-man band. Oh, Actually, oh, he, slow him down he may all. need some help. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Coming up and working with the whole crew here with uh, with Dave and Mike and Mark and Alyssa and everybody's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. There's the blood out of the arm. Ah! This three inch exhaust on this thing is gonna make it sound awesome. It's gonna look good, it's gonna sound good, it's gonna perform spectacular. We've got the exhaust system in the TTI, which is a really nice system. I think we made some pretty good progress. You know, really well. we've got a, a real foundation going on here. It's gonna get down to the point where you gotta start ironing out all the little nitpicky stuff. I wanna sell a whole package to somebody and say, I'll give you a 71 CUDA with a 392 Hemi. First call I'm gonna make to you to order <laughs> yes. a bunch of parts. But the main thing is I call you, I'll be able to order all that. I'll order the system from you, the exhaust, right. the transmission, all the pieces, right? right? Directly from you. Exactly. So it's one call. Does it all? Yeah, exactly. We've got it all covered. I am going to move this car forward. 
and I'm gonna put my billboard on. Because oh, I had man. Phoenix Graphics build me, I think I told you, the 392 where it would call out a 440 or a 340. Right. The billboard stripes on the side of it are going to be a dead giveaway, but I bet a lot of people don't even realize what they say until uh, they focus on it a minute. I'm so anxious to see it with I the... love that stuff. I love how stock the car is gonna look in that one obvious, you know, transition to the modern. Did you see some of the cheating I did in, in that uh, realm here? things that we won't really use that are dummies. With the shaker. Right now they're just working on doing that shaker bubble. That's going to be the the kind of more difficult, you know, piece to, to get lined up right. So we're going to have to do a new base for that and get our shaker bubble mounted. It is a little bit tricky. What we've done is we've fused a 2016 shaker apparatus setup together with a 1971 version. So the 71 bubble fits the opening of the 71 hood, but the base underneath it, we're trimming it out, making modifications to it so that it will accept the bigger bubble. And if all goes well, we'll have a, a complete, it won't be functional because it's not part of the setup to make it functional, but it'll still be a cold air induction because the air cleaner's exposed already, drawn in uh, air from the front of the car. But the shaker will look and function from the shake standpoint exactly like an original N96. Uh, I've heard a lot of things online. I, I saw one uh, guy had put one together and they said it was too much trouble or impossible to do. So we're gonna make it happen, that's what we do. With the Firepower Cuda out of his hands, Will gets back to work on the other cars in the lineup, starting with an old friend, a 70 Challenger RT in plum crazy purple. One of the many cars we're working on right now at Graveyard is our 70 Challenger RT. Uh, this is a really nice little car to start with. The guys are massaging out all the panels. They're getting the panels lined up from the door to the fender, the hood to the fender, they're wanting to make sure that these gaps are the same. This one might need to be closed up a little bit. Keep in mind as we're doing these type of things, you're gonna be putting another coat of primer on it and you're gonna be putting two paint jobs on it. So this is gonna close up. That's why you need a nice fat gap when you get started. It's a neat car from the standpoint of options. You know, we're talking a lot now this season about options and, and what goes on a car and what doesn't. This car started life FC7, so it's plum crazy great color, but it's also a V1X. That means it gets the black vinyl top. It also gets a V6W, which is your white longitudinal stripe. So that's a really awesome color package. I mean, that's gonna pop too. You're gonna have the black top up here. You're gonna have the white longitudinal. You're gonna have the plum crazy paint. It did not get the blackout on the hood. I'll talk to the owner if he wants to add it, the V21, but it did not get that from the factory. So as far as drivetrain options, you have your D21, which is your four speed. You have your E86, which is your 440 Magnum, 375 horsepower. The A33, which is your track pack in the back, 354 Dana. This is a really nice car. They made a total 444 speed, 1970 Challengers, total of 916. So this is a, a really good, rare example, still wearing a lot of its original sheet metal. So what the guys will end up doing, they're gonna finish a line and everything, making sure that their quarter extension moldings fit like they're supposed to, the deck lid fits like it's supposed to, doors to quarters to fenders. Then they'll disassemble that, move the body into the booth, and it'll get its pre-paint on it. Doors will get their pre-paint, fenders get their pre-paint, hood, deck lid, all the other things, balances front and rear. Then it goes back together, gets bolted, lined back up again, and one final paint before it moves over to the assembly shop. What we don't have is a broadcast sheet because this car was built in Los Angeles, California. So none of the LA cars escaped with their broadcast sheet. But what does show up, additional options that show up on the fender tag is a six-way seat. It's a non-console shift. It also is optioned with leather seats. So it has the uh, C6 X5 interior on it. So that's a really neat option little car. Uh, doing a quick catch up on our 71 Firepower Cuda. 392 Hemi, beautiful setup. We got our engine in, of course. Ryan just got our shaker bubble uh, mount and everything pretty much done. Uh, Will's got the shaker bubble actually painted. It's all mocked into place and we just gotta build it out. Put, the, of course, the 392 Hemi call outs on the bubble and get it installed. Uh, Mark's been working on the wiring with Mike. So they got the battery installed, got some of our cable leads run. If you kind of walk around this way here, as you can see, we got all the sheet metal on the front end, you know, all the gills in place. I've been working on the interior. So I pretty much got all the, the back window surround molding in, got the rear door panels on, got the seats installed in the back part of the carpet. So what we got going on in here is 
our, our wiring. It's, it looks like kind of a mess right now. Kind of got a pretty good handle on what I need to wire on it. I just got to basically run all my wiring harness. Once we get these to the mounting points, I got to run some wires back to the fuel pump and to the sending unit. I got to run some forward for the starter relay, of course, and for the electric fans. And then our ignition wires, I'll have just kind of sitting right here so that I could just tie them right into our steering column whenever I install the steering column. Working on this here one piece at a time. I still got to do door panels. I got all the dynamat and everything in. So, I mean, the car's coming along really fast. You know, it's just the art of getting everything right, getting everything, you know, where we need it and getting it down, so. So the back end of the car is completely done now. Got a rear gravel pan in. You can see those really cool exhaust tips coming through the gravel pan. So it just basically looks uh, pretty stock, you know, from the back end of the car. I think the car's gonna sound fantastic with this exhaust. It's got big three inch exhaust. Of course, the newer engines don't have that rumble. You know, like the older engines that idle because they're fuel injected. They don't have a lot of lobe in the cam and everything else. And they just perform a lot more efficiently than the older engines did. Uh, you'll really hear this thing come alive whenever the RPMs get up, of course. Looking pretty good. David? Yes, sir. Hey. Yeah, I got your bubble for you. Nice, nice. That's awesome, man. Dude, this thing's looking good, buddy. It is, yeah. Lots happened in a couple days, huh? Yeah, I got the interior halfway knocked out. Yeah, yeah. Just got to throw some door panels on and front part of the carpet. And... Now, have you also noticed that I brought the board over? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I've seen the board. And I even changed <laughs> it from yesterday to today. Yeah. I figured since. The body guys had it, and I rode there. Yeah? I didn't do it for myself. Yeah. I didn't update it all myself. I'll keep the board updated for you so you don't lose focus. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just a little added stress. That's I mean, perfect. it's only SEMA. Yeah, it's only I mean, SEMA. If the car doesn't go, you know, we don't go, so. Yeah. Uh... OK, let me know right before it's ready okay. to start. Come get me, and then let me hook up, like, the last wire or even tuck the wire under the carpet so that perfect. way I can take credit for getting it running. Right now, I've got Mike and Dave here. We pre-fit the grill uh, before we sent the car over to body and paint. And now we're ready to install it now that the body and paint is done. Hopefully that goes smooth. Then we can put the bumper on and the valance and the front end of our car will be done. Yep. All right. I'm really proud of the guys. I mean, wh what a great team. We're not a huge group. We we're five, six, seven guys, you know, throughout the entire shop that are working on regular cars at the same time. And here we introduce Operation Firepower. It's gotta go through everything. It's gotta be plucked out of the graveyard. It's gotta have the body work, the panels replaced, then the body work, then the primer work, then the paint work, and then over to Dave's area. There's, there's an enormous amount of stuff that normally would take six to eight months, but because the guys were willing to work hard and work the weekends and work the evenings and do all of the things that were necessary to meet this finish line, we're almost there. We're at the point now where we're out of the woods all we got to do is finish wrapping up a few relatively small details, and this thing's ready to fire up. I'm really proud of the guys, and, and I'm honored that uh, we have the team we have assembled around us today. All right, so far we got the grill on and tightened down, so now we're going to start working on the bumper. And that other bolt there, Chief. Yep. Yeah. Exert. Yeah. Look at that, just begging for a GYC plate. Begging for it! I got a brand new one up there, too. Look awesome at that. Possum. Look at that, huh? Well, we're doing real well on our on our firepower car. So we just finished putting the grill, the bumper, the front balance on it. Uh, the rest of the back end's done. Door handles are in. We're working on tightening up some things underneath it. We've got to put the drive shaft in yet. But we're getting close. Uh, we're doing a little bit more wiring on the inside. Uh, but yeah, really, everything's uh, coming together really nicely. I figure we got maybe 75 days into this whole build right now. That's, that's from the time it comes out of the graveyard, dead, until where you see it right now, so. All right, put down the cookies and pay attention. Here's why the ghouls are still on track for SEMA. Will was able to successfully get the Firepower Cuda through paint in record time. And Dave put his nose to the grindstone, setting a personal best as he cranked through assembly. Mark gave us a breakdown on the metalwork being done to the 69 440 GTX. Will received a couple hats to his dismay. And Alyssa revealed a little surprise that might expose him at SEMA. Finally, Mark and crew were able to get everything prepped on the CUDA for its first fire up, making this the fastest build at Graveyard Cars yet. Now let's hope it actually is plug and play.
Dave's just now finishing up the uh, installation of the fuel pressure regulator. Now, that creates about 100 pounds of pressure. So what Dave's installed is a fuel pressure regulator. We gotta be able to cut that pressure down to about 50 pounds. 50 to 60 pounds is the sweet spot on it. This is the original 3 8 main fuel line and the quarter inch vapor return line. All original stock Mopar stuff. The only time it changes is here where we've installed this Holly uh, fuel pressure regulator. So this adjustment screw down here on the bottom, this Allen head, is gonna allow us to be able to make that pressure more or less. What we're gonna want is about 50 pounds. So what we have to do to test that, and this is literally the last stage just before we can fire it up. We're gonna lower the car down, put the fuel in it. We'll hit that with a few bursts to get the fuel up here, monitor the pressure, do whatever adjustment we need to do, lower the car down and fire it up. We're that close, that's if all goes well. I think we did it. I think there was about five gallons in this thing when we started, so. Yeah, I can tell because there's it's leaking all over the ground. Extra sandy hole. The world famous shaker decal. I'm gonna put that on, put the shaker bubble on, and then we are officially done under the hood other than two wires that he's gotta make a connection with. So, got your lube. Yeah, this is my lubricant, Will. Well, you got a problem with it, buddy? No, not at all. I was just asking. Okay, you just seem like you're trying to say something there. Nope. Do you want something to drape over the car, Dad? Uh, Some no. Some paper towels to keep that off of there, or keep the lube off the motor? You gotta just put it on there mm. first. Somebody's gonna have to tell me. I think we have a little step ladder if you How's need one. How's it doing for? What do you think, boss? Looks pretty straight. Pretty yeah. straight, pretty centered. Yep. So that was a pretty good guess. I'm just tossing it up there, huh? See, you're right. still the man of putting on decals. Yeah, sideways like that's pretty darn good. Sideways, one-handed, one foot out for balance. Yeah, pretty much. That's the best. Not a tall guy. Too. How's it look, guys? Looks awesome. awesome. Wow. Sticker makes that hood, don't it? Yeah, it does. For the decal. You're welcome. Thanks, Royal. We really couldn't have done this without you. Done what? Built the whole car out in 80 days. I You've wasn't been, here. And, you can take credit for the entire build if you do the alignment. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> oh, well, you gotta split it with him. Yeah, he handed, I wired the car, but I built Mike this whole thing myself. Wire cutters, oh, I think. Oh, okay. You wanna hurt me, don't you? No. Something is Why awesome. would I wanna do that? I don't know, buddy. You did a good job. Man, that looks good. It's gonna be a, a plug and play, rock and roll, show and go. Are you excited? Blow and go. That's I'm excited. Yeah. Chromium Diome side Let's is excited. That's what he looks like when he's just out of his mind with excitement. Do you ever see Flatliners? Dave, was, are you ready? A good movie. That's a great movie. Oh, yeah, I'm ready. More than ready. Dave's ready. Michael? Ready. Eliza? Of course. Hey, Zeus? Or Will? No, I thought your name was Zeus. I said, no, hey, Zeus. <laughs> yes, I'm excited. Die Hard 3. God, okay. Oh, <laughs> there it goes. So. Yeah. Our pump kicked on. And is our ignition, yeah. I guess, whatever it's the is. The ignition, for... everything's hooked up, so it's good. Yeah. Plasm, plasm, That's what I'm talking about. Plasm, plasm, plasm.